Hello and welcome to the Apple Insider Podcast. This is your host, Stephen Robles. And joining me this week from across the pond is my friend, William Gallagher. How's it going, William? Uh, we're in lockdown. That's what we're in. Asking how it's going in 2020 is kind of a fraught question, I think. <laughs> That's true. For anyone. But yes, I saw that the UK and, and other countries have been shutting down. So we will discuss that for sure towards the end of the show. But we do have some news and obviously there's a huge event next week. So let's touch on that. And... You actually have a, a new phone in hand, and so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I do. Uh, literally in hand. I'm holding it now. And just, <laughs> frankly, oh, well, it's just you, isn't it? I, I'm stroking it. Yeah, that's fine. You're doing a My Precious uh, Lord of the Rings thing. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. That would be it. Yes. So first of all, next week on Tuesday, November 10th, Apple announced that they're holding their third event this fall. They titled it their One More Thing event, which, you know, Apple famously does that every once in a while. You know, they, they save it for, for the big ones, for the standout products, but they call it the One More Thing event. And I don't know if you saw this, William, but there's an augmented reality invite. They've been doing this with all their events now. Mm. And the, the previous augmented reality invites haven't really given away anything, but I think this one, if you do it, it's actually an Apple logo, and you kind of see it going from a laying down position to a open and then closed again. And I think it's pretty sure that's to allude to the Apple Silicon MacBooks or new laptops, maybe they'll change the name, uh, that are going to be announced next week. There's some rumors that we will see multiple models that we might see a 13 and a 16 inch, maybe an Air and a Pro. I imagine we'll see at least two different models. I can't imagine that they would only have one MacBook and be a big event. But actually, before we even talk about or pontificate about the kinds of MacBooks they might announce... It seems like every event this fall, we've gotten the two product announcement. So in the first event in September, we had the Apple Watch and iPad Air. During the iPhone high speed event, we got all the new iPhone 12s and the HomePod mini. And so I would assume, and it looks like we'll have the Apple Silicon Mac being the headliner for this event next week, but I'd Pretty sure there'll be one more thing, pun intended. What do you think? I'm thinking AirTags or AirPod Studio. Which do you think has a better chance? That's two more things. And those AirPods come in pairs. So is that three more things? <laughs> no, no. Um, <laughs> no, I think I think, yeah, I think it'll only be one or the other. But uh, yeah, what do you think? From what I understood, there was some um, problem with uh, the AirPod Studio, some manufacturing thing that meant that they were delayed. Right. Uh, that means to me, if I had to bet uh, AirTags, would seem more likely. But I think if we have two, and, and I agree it's more likely, I feel like surely they do a desktop and a laptop. Uh, it somehow feels more dramatically correct. But one laptop and an AirTag, well, depending on the money, uh, I, I could actually afford an AirTag. So, yeah, right, right. OK, AirTags. So you say air tags. I'll do a different prediction, so this way we can see who's right next time okay. we're on the show. But I'm saying Apple TV first announcement Apple Silicon Max as the larger second announcement. Mm -hmm. Because, and the reason why I'm saying that is, obviously the new Apple Silicon chip, which they might call it the A14 with some other letter, maybe the A14M, or maybe it won't even follow the 14 line. Maybe it'll be a different numbering system altogether and they'll call it the M1 or something. You know, I think the chips is going to be the story at this new event. And so a new Apple TV that boasts a new chip that might even be Better for gaming, more powerful for some of that, more powerful games coming to Apple TV. So I say Apple TV and MacBook. And then we will see in this gentleman's wager. No, 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 no. Gentleman's wager. <laughs> when you cheated, you offered me a choice. AirTags, Apple, uh, I did. Apple <laughs> Studio. And then you went Apple TV. Well, huh. I forgot. I thought of it as you were talking. So yeah, okay. So no wager. We'll just see. We'll see what happens. But I would be excited about any of those uh, for sure. I'd be curious about a new Apple TV and AirTags. But when it comes to the Apple Silicon Mac, you know, there's been lots of questions. You know, the way Apple has always sold their Macs, you know, whether you're buying a MacBook or an iMac or whatever Mac, you know, there's always lots of customization options. You can choose a processor speed with the Intel chips, you know, it'd be i3, i5, 7, or even 9. You have multiple RAM choices. You have graphic card choices, you know, depending on what model you're getting, if you're getting a higher end MacBook Pro or iMac. So I think what I am most curious about, and we don't have much information on this, but I'm curious what customization options Apple is going to give with these Apple Silicon Macs. I feel like having multiple chip choices is kind of against what Apple normally does, especially if you look at like iPad Pros and iPhones and all that. Even RAM, you know, Apple is usually very 
cagey about RAM inside phones. We know the iPhone 12 Pro line has six gigs of RAM. The regular 12 has four, but Apple never says any of that. So if we have any customizations, I'm curious, and especially with the GPU as well, if it's built into the chip, will we have other options? Or if it's just you get the MacBook Air and that's that model, and maybe you get a storage option like you do with iPad and that's it, and maybe you get a MacBook Pro and it's the more powerful one, and you get storage options, and that's all you get. You make it sound like we're going to go into the same situation around with the iPhone 12 range, where all the processors are the same, much of the design is the same, the differences are really quite subtle. I mean, that'd be good in some ways, but very confusing in others. <laughs> For people that don't care to make a bunch of choices, you know, most consumers, you know, you think about a student getting a laptop going off to college or university, you know, parents would probably enjoy not having to make a ton of decisions on that. They say, just give me the MacBook Air and give me the 500 gig version and we'll be done with it. And they just know it's going to work and it's going to be fast and they don't have to worry that what is the difference between an i5 and i7. And so I think maybe in some lines, like the if they re- bring back the MacBook, just the kind of the low end MacBook and the MacBook Air, maybe one choice there. And then, but the MacBook Pro, maybe you get a couple different models. Maybe you get like <laughs> medium fast, fast, and really fast. I don't know how they would market those differences. That appeals to me, actually. Uh, I'm I worried on the way in because I, I, I've spent a long time wondering whether I made a mistake going for the iPhone 12 Pro when the iPhone 12 does a lot of what I want. And the thought of going through all that again didn't appeal. But yeah, the the just works. Buy this, it does it, fine. And all the Intel, iCore, Duo, 9, 4, 4th generation, 10th, yeah. I, I found that bewilderingly confusing. Uh, so to be free of that with just A14 and a bit, right? that sounds good to me. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, if you're a pro and you want to really know how much RAM you're getting, what the GPU core and speed is, you got the Mac Pro and maybe an iMac Pro or similar model iMac where you get some of those options. So anyway, very curious what they do and how they frame it. So that event is 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. For you in the UK, what is that, 6 p.m.? Yes. 6 p.m.? Aha, uh-huh, yeah. I got it right off the top of my head. Look at that. Uh, so it is. Yeah, but look who's saying yes. I, I, I get very, <laughs> very confused. <laughs> but, <'cause laughs> right, we right. changed our clocks back a, about a week before uh, you did. And for that week, I was just my head was all over the place. Uh, I'm going to go with yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize you guys change your clocks at a different time than we do. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Got to be awkward. <laughs> Interesting. Well, the event is Tuesday, November 10th, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. UK time. And just one final question on this before we move on. Does any of these tempt you? Do you think in the near future you might be an early adopter to these Apple Silicon Macs? Or are you going to do a wait-and-see approach? It would have appealed. Um, I'm on a 2018 Mac Mini, and it's straining a lot. I wanted to move to an Apple Silicon. And actually, I mean, before lockdowns, plural, I used to do a lot of travel. And I was thinking I really should, my next machine should be a MacBook, MacBook Pro. And when I thought that and Apple Silicon was coming, clearly wait for that. But now uh, I didn't expect to spend any money buying an iPhone 12. I thought I'd sit this year out. (laughs) So I'm somewhat down financially on my right. uh, I only like to give Apple right. so much every minute um, so <laughs> I'm going to be uh, technologically responsible this time Ooh. and wait for the next generation the sort of February time onwards and pretend it's for all the best reasons when actually my heart says mm. I want to buy them all right now <laughs> I, I like that phrase uh, for technologically responsible yes yeah, oh, oh, okay, I'll have that what about you uh, are you uh, poised I have been holding out for the new iPad Pros, and I I still want to hold out for that. But my thinking is I I actually have a 16-inch MacBook Pro, and I bought it with some use cases in mind that I used it for, and now it's a little bit overkill. And I've always loved the 13-inch MacBook Pro size for portability. But I also, you know, I have an 11 inch iPad Pro, so I, honestly, I'm not sure. I really want to see the comparisons in speed. You know, if they put up on the screen that their Apple Silicon Mac is two times faster than the fastest Intel i9 that I have in my 16 inch MacBook Pro, I might look to offload that MacBook Pro and just go with an Apple Silicon Mac. I mean, I would love to kind of get in right as they're 
being announced and launched. I just love this idea of the Apple Silicon Max and, you know, the kind of speed you might get from Apple really controlling the whole stack. So we'll see. I would probably sell my 16-inch first, and I'm curious to see how those those speed comparisons go, especially the Final Cut yeah. performance, because as we'll talk about in a second, I'm basically a YouTuber now, you know, very, very famous YouTuber. Uh, right here. Yes. And <laughs> but we'll talk about that in a second. So we'll see. Final Cut Performance is important to me. And given that that's Apple software, and if Apple Silicon really works well with Final Cut and you get really fast rendering times, and, you know, I don't know. We'll see what they announce. But but I'm very tempted, for sure. I can tell you that before it was announced, Apple Silicon, I got close enough to buying a MacBook Pro that I went through all the uh, figures for the 13 and the 16, specifically looking at my use of Final Cut Pro and uh, what I needed for it and where I needed it for it. And it was coming down to, I was reluctantly uh, close to getting the 16 inch for the power that it gave with the separate GPU. Uh, but right. I don't like what to me seems like a, a sailboat sized image. I much prefer <laughs> the 13 inch. But then I was also hoping the 13 would magically become a 14. And you know, right. that was rumored before. So yeah, I'm, I'm ready with all the specs in my head from the last set. Uh, I'll, I'll be comparing as well. Right. And maybe we'll see that 14 inch finally come. Yeah. That was the, you know, 15 went to 16, 13.3. We had heard it might go to 14. Maybe now's the time. Maybe they'll have like a a 12 inch a 14 and a 16 you know who knows but i remember my first apple laptop was the g4 powerbook 12 inch and i loved that thing oh yes 12 inch powerbook yes yeah that's a very nice one this episode is brought to you by mint mobile breaking up with your old wireless provider just got a whole lot easier thanks to mint mobile they were the first company to sell premium wireless service online only and now Mint Mobile is introducing their unlimited data plan for just 30 bucks a month. Let that sink in for a second. Unlimited data plan for 30 bucks a month. I have to tell you, I've been with the big guys for a long time. And especially now with all the 5G stuff, those plans are getting even more expensive and more convoluted. Now that I'm using Mint Mobile on my iPhone 12 Pro, I love the idea of knowing I can have unlimited data, just 30 bucks a month, way cheaper than the other guys. And I don't have to deal with all the riffraff and all the different kinds of throttling and plans that they deal with. If you don't like your phone bill, like I didn't, and you're ready to cut ties with big wireless, Mint Mobile offers their premium unlimited plan for just 30 bucks a month. The reason why it's such a great deal is because Mint Mobile eliminated all the traditional costs of retail stores and brick and mortar, and they passed that savings on to you. Every plan comes with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data, and it's delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with Mint Mobile. You can use your new iPhone 12 or 12 Pro. Keep your same phone number or get a new one. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their 7-day money-back guarantee. Break up with your big wireless provider now and switch to Mint Mobile's premium unlimited data plan for just 30 bucks a month. To get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 30 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash Apple Insider. That's mintmobile.com slash Apple Insider. Cut your unlimited wireless bill to just $30 a month at mintmobile.com slash Apple Insider. Our thanks to Mint Mobile for sponsoring this episode. So as you listen to this episode, pre-orders are live for the iPhone 12 mini, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and the HomePod mini, and also Apple's leather cases for iPhone 12 and 12 Pro. I've seen that that is rumored to be uh, going for sale now as well. And William and I both have an iPhone 12 Pro in hand, which I am eager to hear what William has to say about the 12 Pro. But listeners, let us know, did you go with a mini? Did you go with a Pro Max? How are pre-orders this time? I will be pre-ordering a HomePod mini to check that out and maybe an Apple leather case as well. But I've I decided to go with the regular Pro and not the Max, so I won't be pre-ordering a phone this time. So William, are you going to be pre-ordering anything today as, as our listeners hear this episode? Actually, probably not. I'm, I'm, I'm without question going to buy a HomePod mini. I'm, I'm actually looking to buy one as a Christmas present uh, for my wife. So if she's listening to this, Angela, look behind you. It's too late for that, isn't it? Uh, as you reveal. Yeah. Okay, didn't think that through. I'm certain that I'm going to do that. But since it's going to be for Christmas, there's no particular benefit in pre-ordering right. for it. Unless, I mean, I, unless, I mean, you know how the iPhone 12 and stuff have been selling out 
really quickly. Right. I mean, even MagSafe accessories, you know, if you wanted to get a MagSafe wallet right now, I looked because I saw a bunch of people tweeting about it and I was like, maybe I want one of those. It's not arriving till like late November. So I, you might want to think about pre-ordering it as we speak. Uh, do you know, I will. Actually, you've just <laughs> totally changed my mind. Uh, talk faster so I can get to the pre-order <laughs> button. Okay. Yeah, I just, I really think it's going to be a very popular yeah. item. And so, you know, I don't know if you remember when AirPods were first announced. Yes. Those were hard to get uh, because those went for sale, I think, in November or even early December. And, you know, if you wanted it before Christmas, you had to pre-order it immediately. And if you waited, you couldn't get it for eight to 12 weeks. So, you know, sometimes some of these products that hit a certain price point, I think you're really in between like that 100 and $150 price point that are Christmassy type items, Hanukkah type gift items. You definitely, uh, they go fast. So you might want to hit hit one of those up. Cool. I'm glad we had this conversation, I think. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very well. Glad I could help. Now, you, William, now have your iPhone 12 Pro after a heartbreaking delay. Yes. It is now in your hands. You are holding it. Tell us, A, what color you got, what you think of it, and then, uh, yeah, your your overall impression. Uh, it's the Pacific Blue, which is mm. lovely. And actually, I must say, uh, the, delay, the delay was disheartening because it was a hiccup during the ordering process that saw the delivery date slip from October 23rd to November the 9th. Uh, but then it arrived actually a week early. So good on Apple. Uh, under promise, <laughs> over deliver. That made me very, very happy when that arrived. Right. Except um, I'm going to admit I did actually, I went through about a day of buyer's remorse because the difference in the Pro and the 12 is so fine. You're now a YouTube star. I have a YouTube channel called uh, 58 Keys, and this right. this will now never be shown. I, I shot uh, an episode about this three different times uh, because I kept changing my mind. Uh, and it's also an incredibly complicated shoot because it, it ended up being an intervention with myself arguing with myself <laughs> on behalf of each phone. I mean, really right. complicated. And after I'd shut it all and edited it together, I realized something had happened. And it's that I now completely love and adore my iPhone 12 Pro. <laughs> and I'm so glad <laughs> I got it. And and the, the 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 tipping point, I mean, of the many, many things that I love about it, the tipping point was actually last night, I used the LiDAR scanner, an, an app called uh, Canvas, uh, to do a quick scan mm. of our living room. And it is Utterly beautiful. I have no idea mm. when I'll ever use it, but playing with <laughs> it is incredible. So I'm I'm very, very pleased with it. Yes. So yay, very cool. iPhone 12 Pro. Yay. Are you similarly uh, happy or have you got 5G disappointment? Well, we'll talk about the 5G in a second because I have a, an adventure there. Yeah. But I, I really love the, the 12 Pro. Um, I'm curious, though, so that I keep seeing the blue... I have a little bit of buyer's remorse. I went white because I've, I've gone black for so long and I wanted a different color. And I wasn't sure about the blue, but the blue looks really nice. Do you like the color you got? You glad you went with that? I do. But as I sit here, as we record this, uh, it's quite uh, dark outside in, here in the UK, possibly because of the lockdown. I don't know. That's a different type of darkness. Right. Uh, in this light... <laughs> It doesn't actually look blue. It looks more a kind of space grey uh, thing. But in regular daylight, I think it's gorgeous enough that um, I yet again hate the idea of putting it in a case. So I'm gingerly carrying it around and admiring oh. it every now and again. Yeah, that's coming from the 11 Pro. Because you didn't have the Max, right? You just had the regular 11 Pro. That's right. And still do. Actually, yeah. I'm keeping them uh, both right, right. Uh, for reasons. Yeah. So coming from the 11 Pro... I'm curious your thoughts on it, but but this 12 Pro definitely feels heavier and larger. You know, obviously it is a physically larger screen, and the dimensions are slightly different, more taller than wide. But for some reason, it just feels significantly chunkier in hand. Mm. And so I, I have an Apple Silicon case, but I keep going back and forth because the case adds even more bulk. And without a case, it does feel very nice and looks great. Fingerprints on the side edges aside, yes. <laughs> but uh, nerve wracking a little bit without a case. So so you're going no case. Did you get a silicon case or anything just in case? No, I never do. I mean, I've been talking with a lot of people about this but, uh, and everyone's, I seem to be the only person who has no marks on my iPhone at all. Really? Not the faintest little pixel of a scratch. I don't know what the rest of you are doing, uh, <laughs> but a couple of years ago, I did actually drop uh, my iPhone XS Max and smash it 
to pieces. So uh, I'm not blasé about this, but I'm, I'm doing all right so far. So. Okay. You don't even have like micro abrasions on the screen? Just like no, those hairline? No, not one. Andrew O'Hara, your partner in crime on the Home Kit Insider podcast, sent me a photograph of his screen and I sent him a photograph of mine right back. Huh? What is that man doing to his phones that I'm not? <laughs> wow, okay. So you don't drop your phone, and I guess you never accidentally graze a metal object near it? Nope. <laughs> like um, keys or otherwise? I have occasionally slammed my Apple Watch into a door by mistake. That that That's the frightening yes. thing. Uh, but with yeah. the phone, no. And I have actually dropped most of my phones a, a few times. I mean, all right, only once into a toilet. That's complicated. And that was pre uh, all the fancy um, waterproofing. IP, uh, so very, very scary. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but otherwise, yep, I mostly have a shirt pocket that I slip it into or a jacket pocket. And uh, Andrew's actually saying that he keeps his, I think it must be his front jeans pocket and the wear as he pulls it out is what's making the marks. Uh, Recently, I've ended, for some reason, I've ended up with a lot of shirts that, don't have a shirt pocket and I've been putting my phone in my back pocket and the moment he told me this I've stopped doing that uh, <laughs> right. Do, right buy new shirts that's what I'm doing uh, this week right well it's, it's good to hear uh, do you have any regret or do you think you'll experience any regret when the Pro Max comes out and if they say that this camera is uh, like life changing do you think you'll have any kind of regret then I, I've wondered because I, the reason I'm keeping my old iPhone 11 Pro is so that I have two cameras for shooting YouTube things. Uh, and the key thing with both of these that I didn't have with the iPhone XS Max is that the front-facing camera uh, is very good on both. And since I film uh, myself alone, usually, uh, being able to shoot with the front camera means I can do the framing quicker and do all this stuff. I can now do multiple shots very quickly with the setup. So... That made me keep, this is why I wanted the 12 Pro originally. And then I started hearing about the greater stability of the camera on the Pro Max. And I wondered, it's not that much more than an iPhone 12 Pro for what you get. So, no. I mean, but uh, as I remember saying to you before, I liked my iPhone XS Max, but I loved my iPhone 11 Pro. Yeah. And I do notice the, the slightly bigger screen. I'm surprised how visibly the uh, bigger it seemed. You know, and even when they're not side by side, I opened it up and I, I immediately saw the difference. Uh, so yeah, um, it's bigger, but it's still within my grippable range. And, and the Max, I just think, is too much for me, really in every way. But I'm, I'm, you're not tempted by it then. I am. I was very tempted by it. But after holding the 12 Pro now, I really don't want anything larger. You know, I, I think. <laughs> right. And looking at my camera roll, it's mostly screenshots and and random pictures that <laughs> uh, I think an even slightly better camera is not going to make it look that much better. You know, I, I take pictures of my kids sometimes, obviously, but most of the time it's very bright outside or, you know, I'm doing portrait mode and, you know, trying to, I don't know if it's going to make that big of a difference for those action shots. You know, kids don't stay extremely still anyway when you take uh, <laughs> when you take pictures of them. So anyway, I'm, I think I'm good. We'll see. I know Wes is getting the Pro Max, and so if oh, he right. takes pictures and they look like DSLR quality, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do then. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn about astronomy and space with Neil deGrasse Tyson. You can learn from master animal trainer and the Emmy-winning host of Lucky Dog, Brandon McMillan. You can even learn skateboarding from Tony Hawk. And one of my favorites, you can learn from the former FBI lead international kidnapping negotiator Chris Voss and learn how to negotiate for yourself like one of the pros. I've done several of these master classes and I love it every time. I've done Hans Zimmer's course on music composition. I've done Chris Voss. I've also watched some of the cooking ones like with Gordon Ramsay. And I love being able to learn at my own pace. Masterclass has such extremely well-produced video and audio. I love just watching the lessons. And each lesson is only about 10 to 15 minutes and you can do it on a lunch break or just sneak one in whenever you are. And it's great because you can watch on any device. You can watch in the Masterclass app on your iPhone, your iPad, or your Apple TV or you can just watch it in a web browser. I also love when I'm watching it on my phone and I jump in the car or I want to go just to listening to it, you can flip it from video to audio mode with a press of the button and just listen to the rest of your lesson on your way. 
Every lesson also gives you additional resources like downloads, PDFs, where you can continue learning. And let me just say again, if you're a freelancer or you work with clients on your own, I've read Chris Voss's book, Never Split the Difference, but I would say it's even better to watch him in the masterclass course talking about negotiation and how to handle yourself in those kinds of situations. It's an excellent class. So I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And as an Apple Insider listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash Apple Insider. That's masterclass.com slash Apple Insider for 15% off masterclass. Our thanks to masterclass for sponsoring this episode. So with the 12... You now have a 5G phone. Yes. And I have a 5G phone. And we've talked last time you were on the show about the state of 5G in the UK. Yeah. And so I'd like to hear your experience now that you have the phone. And for those, if you're tired of hearing 5G, I promise this is the last time I'm going to do a big segment on it. But the reason why I just have to touch it one more time is because I have finally found Millimeter Wave near me here in Central Florida. I went on a Lord of the Rings era quest to try and find... 5G plus somewhere in Florida. And so the Verizon ultra wide band is what Apple touted on stage and it's what all the reviewers were using. But I have AT&T and I'm sure many of our listeners have AT&T. And so I was very keen to see, does AT&T actually have a millimeter wave 5G somewhere around? Now on AT&T's website, as I've said before, they advertise 5G plus as millimeter wave and it's in quote unquote, select innovation zones in quote, select cities, end quote, end quote. Everything's in quotes. <laughs> like you, you cannot count the amount of asterisks and quotes about this. And so I went to downtown Orlando, again, looking for antennas, going to their cell towers, doing a ton of research on all that, seeing where the Orlando Sentinel announced that 5G was installed, tried contacting AT&T. Anyway, finally, two people helped me out. There's uh, Jamie Williams. He actually contacted me on Twitter. He works for AT&T, the business side. He was able to find the exact intersection in Orlando where it was. And also someone named Tiffany from AT&T Corporate finally got it for me. But it is exactly one street corner in exactly one place in Orlando, and that's it. And then there's like a few street corners in Miami and one in Jacksonville, and that's it for Florida. So if you were on that list of AT&T 5G plus cities, just know it is probably exactly one street corner. There's not really other places like it is not widespread at all. I think it's in one or two stadiums. It's in one stadium in Jacksonville, but even not a lot of stadiums, not as much as Verizon. Now, I have seen some people on YouTube also find it in some Walmarts. There's some Walmarts installing <laughs> millimeter wave antennas inside so you can get super fast 5G while you're shopping around Walmart, apparently. So if that's you, <laughs> listener, if you've seen a Walmart with 5G plus on at and I'd love to see pictures and, and see what you got there. But found the intersection. I went there. And then I just had to do a video of it because I was so happy to have finally found Mordor to finally get there and, and throw the ring in and, and get 5G+. Plus. So there's a video on the Apple Insider YouTube. Go check it out. I'll put a link in show notes to that video and an article that Amber wrote up talking about all the 5G+. Plus. And so I found it. I got up to 1600 megabits down, which is great. Apple touted up to four gigabits in ideal conditions. I've seen some of the Verizon ultra wideband get up to two, almost 3000, but at and 5G plus where I was got up to about 1600. But in real world use cases, I tried downloading movies. I tried downloading from Dropbox, some large files. I even tried hotspotting. And I have to say in a lot of those practical use cases, I don't know if at and is throttling some of those sources of data. I don't know if I did too many speed tests. So at and started throttling my phone specifically, but I did not really get good speeds doing anything practically. I was able to get speed test the app, give me that high number. But when I tried to practically download a movie through Disney+, Plus, Netflix, even Apple TV movies, it just was not very fast. And so as far as practicality of the at and millimeter wave, I've not found it to be very useful. And again, it was exactly one street corner outside of Universal Studios Orlando. So that was my experience. I found it. Do you know why you didn't get practical use out of it, though? Why is that? You said there was somebody called Tiffany and a Jamie and a Ryan. They're all back at wherever it was, giggling as they held the buttons down to delay your downloads. <laughs> That's what it was. you got to have some fun. Oh, no. No, no. 
No, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. That was my experience. I'd go check out the video. You could see me on the video right outside Universal Orlando. You could see me doing the speed tests and hotspotting and trying to download stuff. So it does exist. at and 5G plus millimeter wave service is a real thing. It is just extremely limited and in very few places. So William, I know you were saying that millimeter wave isn't even an option there in the UK, but now that you have your 12 with 5G and all that, have you experienced anything related to 5G? Uh, I was going to say lockdown to you. I um, haven't been able to get out of the house to try it, and there's no 5G right. where I am. I did look up, um, actually, before we knew the lockdown was coming, I ch- I had the phone for a couple of days before it was in place. I, I looked to see where 5G was, and there's plenty enough of it around uh, Birmingham in the UK where I am, but nothing close enough that I could actually conveniently nip out to check while we could still conveniently nip out to do anything right that's what i was particularly in- i watched a video of you i was really interested uh, for the, the that part about the practicality of it because everybody talks about these speeds but then to actually see it, i loved how fast music downloaded for you well that was good yeah 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 that was cool but i was really expecting you know and i checked every setting just you know before everybody tweets at me you know netflix has settings where you know you allow maximum data and you allow high speed you know downloads like use all the data and i did all those settings my in the settings app i made sure it was 5g on not just 5g auto i, I told it to use as much data as possible just eat up my entire <laughs> data allotment for the month and even with all those settings in the right place it just did not give me very fast speeds. Even just downloading a five gigabyte file from Dropbox, I had a movie rip, uh, like Star Wars The Force Awakens. It was five gigabytes. And it took, I don't know, two minutes to download. And it seemed, or even longer. And it, that's about the same that I experienced with just LTE speeds. So I'm not quite sure if there's something up with throttling from certain services like Dropbox or Netflix, you know, if at and is limiting that. And, you know, of all the asterisks about 5G+, Plus, there's also many asterisks about throttling on AT&T. If the network is busy, if there's too many users in the area, if the wind is blowing from east to west, they'll you know slow down your connection. So I don't know if maybe I did too many speed tests at first, so they started locking down that tower. I'm not sure. But that was my experience. You know, Check out the video and let me know if you see AT&T 5G+, Plus or Verizon Ultra Wideband, and you actually get some cool use cases out of it, like you can download a big file very quickly, I'd love to see it. You know, take a quick video and, and tweet it at me, at Stephen Robles, and let me know. Actually, do you remember a year, 18 months ago, everybody was saying, Apple is doomed, Apple is dead in the water, because it has it won't have 5G until the end of 2020. What were all the Android users using their 5G for? Where were they using this stuff? What, what confused? <laughs> I don't know. And now I've, you know, in some places... I do get slightly faster downloads. So when I was first going out to Orlando to test 5G, I literally went directly under the AT&T cell tower. I was, you know, getting X-Men abilities as I was standing there. And there I got like 120 down and it was on regular 5G, not 5G+. And so that seemed legitimately faster than LTE speeds I would get normally just around town. So that seemed better but again, not hugely. So you break into cell towers. Uh, you stalk outside <laughs> Universal Studios. Uh, this video of yours is probably going to be the last video as well, uh, isn't it? Uh, this is- <laughs> I was in a TGI Friday's parking lot for the for the filming of that video. So okay. I don't know. I was surprised yeah. no one stopped me. But anyway, <laughs> check out the video. Let me know what you think, listeners. Uh, I found 5G+. Plus. It exists. Now, as we round out the show, COVID-19 amongst... The election here in the United States, so much craziness going on, but we'll stick to what actually affects Apple stuff and you specifically, William. UK is now under a secondary lockdown, and that seems to have also included the Apple stores over there in the UK. So, William, tell us kind of what the status is right now. Right now, as we record this, um, all England Apple stores are closed. Uh, Wales and Scotland are open. I think there's only one in Northern Ireland and it's closed uh, anyway. As of uh, the time people are listening to this, at least most England Apple stores say they will have a cook and collect system open. So if you've ordered something online, you should still be able to pick it up and they will also accept returns. Um, I don't know what the circumstances are, but they'll be available for it. Other than that, everything is shut uh, from the Apple stores from, it was uh, 5th of November to the 2nd of December. We believe it'll be the 2nd of December when it's lifted. No, that's the wrong word. We're told it's the 5th, but 
the UK and the US are quite similar in that you kind of you believe it when you see it when you've been right. told something uh, officially you know we're dealing with it we're staying locked in but we won't be surprised if it extends on into Christmas unfortunately there was some confusion a couple of days ago actually uh, an Apple store employee reached out to Apple Insider to say that they had been told Apple was going to keep the stores open and for a while it looked like they might because in France which is also in a lockdown Apple stores did uh, there's a way that they can count that count as essential stores uh, or near enough to stay open and it looked like it was going to happen here so actually I was quite surprised when the lockdown started when it was just you no know, blanket everything closed wow. and then later on a few hours later we started getting this cook and collect possibility the thing that really amazed me though it just never occurred to me the UK's version of the iPhone upgrade program it's effectively dead until this is open because for some reason it works on a very different financial basis here in the UK than it does in the States so in the huh. UK excuse, uh, yeah actually in the whole of the UK not just England you cannot join the iPhone upgrade program unless you go into to an Apple store and uh, have a uh, credit check conducted in person. Wow. You can't do it to join in the first place. And what we're learning today, asking people on it, you can't do that even when it comes to the renewal time. There's still some financial requirement for you to go in. And since you can't go in, uh, you can't get the program. Uh, so all those people in the UK who were holding off, upgrading on the program, waiting for the iPhone XS Max, um, well, they can still buy it. They can still uh, get a, a loan a system that's very similar to the upgrade program, but they can't actually get it through the upgrade program yet. Oh, man. Isn't it? I mean, presumably the same thing happened uh, during our first lockdown in March, but, I mean, who buys a new iPhone in March when they're on the upgrade program? <laughs> yeah, it's suddenly right. it's noticeable. Now, there's obviously not going to be any kind of store pickup option for the Pro Max or 12 Mini coming, but I imagine you could still pre-order it. There could be. I mean, there is this click and collect thing for online ordering. I was going through all the uh, the UK sites of what was available when, and really nothing's available. But once they are, once the pre-order process is over, the week is available, I think it's at least, I'm, I'm certain, you will be able to order an iPhone Tennis Max and go to the store, like run past them and scoop it up like a baton kind of thing. Right. But what you cannot do uh, is is get it via the program. It has to be pre-bought, whether this outright sale or through... The... This is a confusing part, and I've had people asking me about this. Um, in the UK, Apple still has a deal with Barclays Financing, mm. and Barclays Financing will do loans... Uh, for you which can all be checked out online so you don't have to go to a store for those you can order it and have your phone sent to you but Barclays is behind the UK uh, upgrade program and there you cannot and who knows what minuscule financial loopholes somewhere requires them to go this strange route but it's been that way for years so it's not going to change wow well very strange yeah. you know listen just for our US listeners and around the world stay safe Breathe deeply, <laughs> you know, maybe turn off the news for a bit. I had to, you know, now that we have the Apple One Services Bundle, which I did sign up for, and we have News Plus, I kept looking at the news app, and I've decided I'd need to not look at that for a while. Yeah, especially here in the U.S., as we're literally in the middle of uh, kind of a chaotic election, so... I actually had a nightmare about your election, and in the nightmare, oh. I decided that I was going to delete Apple News off my iPhone, and I woke up. It's one of those where it's so real, you believe it for a second, and I'm looking at my phone right. by the bed thinking, why is news still on there? I just deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's wild. So anyway, listeners, uh, stay safe out there. Be encouraged. You know, do something. If you can open a window and look out and breathe deeply, you know, do that as well. Let us know. We'd love to interact with you on social media, especially during this time. If you if you can't go anywhere, but if you're pre-ordering stuff, hey, we'd love to talk. And you can tweet at William or I. Our Twitter handles are in the show notes. You can find it there. Let us know if you pre-ordered something or if you how much you're enjoying your 12 or 12 Pro. I'd love to hear about that as well. If you haven't yet, we'd appreciate a five-star rating and review in Apple Podcasts as well. There's a few of you that do that every week, and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you for doing it. Don't forget to check out HomeKit Insider. That goes out every Monday, and you can hear Andrew O'Hara and myself talk about HomeKit products. We have the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Apple Insider, where you can see me finally finding 5G Plus and running those tests on my iPhone 12 Pro. And as always, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>